Hi, this is Dr. Joy Kong. Uh, just as an introduction, I am the um, medical director of Thea Center for Regenerative Medicine. I'm also the founder and CEO of Chara Biologics. I'm also the founder and president of American Academy of Integrative Cell Therapy. So uh, in this video, I want to talk about something I know a lot of people have questions about. Um, I get asked about it. Um, the question is, how do I find a good stem cell doctor or a good stem cell clinic? Um, there's so many doctors say, I do stem cells, so come to me. And as a patient, a lot of people get confused. They get buried in different opinions and different claims and rhetorics. So how can you be informed and find a trustworthy clinic and doctor to get treatment? So first of all, the number one thing I think that's important for everybody, you know, we all know, is integrity. Um, and that can only be found out through research, understanding how the doctor works, you know, what kind of reviews out there. Um, just is this doctor out there just to make money or really it's out there to help patients? Um, you know, doctors deserve to make a living, right? They put in a lot of effort. They're helping the world. They should be rewarded. But if you put that as the reason to do your work, that is backwards. And I wouldn't personally trust those doctors. So that's one thing. Um, but when it comes to, you know, if you know somebody has integrity, what else do you look for? So first of all, there's a question of whether or not to use stem cell source from your own body or from a source that's much younger. And when we talk about that source in this country, is the birth tissue source. So it's from umbilical cord tissue, cord blood, amniotic membrane, amniotic fluid, right? So, so these are the different sources that pe people talk about, placenta. Um, so there are definitely differences between all these sources. So I, I, in my video, there's a very technical video called Are All MSEs Created Equal? And that's more for professionals, but any person who wants to really know the, 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 the scientific portions, the, the, you know, wanting to know deeper the language and the discoveries of what has been found out about, about you know, it, within the science, you know, I encourage you to watch it because there's a lot of good information. I presented that uh, lecture um, in a lot of conferences in this country and also internationally. I think um, it's very interesting for the professionals, but also should be very interesting for the public. Um, and I also have uh, a much simpler presentation. It's called How Stem Cells Work. Um, that will give you a little bit more kind of in layman terms. And also I talked about the differences between stem cells and exosomes. So that's a whole other subject. Some people do exosome therapy and somehow people think that's stem cells. Uh, that's not stem cells. It's related to stem cells, but it's vastly different. So I, I think the differences are important for people to know. But um, that said, if you are looking at different sources of stem cells from your own body, what happens when you grow up and age, right? First of all, the number of stem cells in your body drastically decline. It goes like this exponentially. So when you were born, the most important type of stem cells, one of the most important, but they are really kind of have, have a role of this, um, like a master role of conducting the activities of regeneration. They're called mesenchymal stem cells. So they're also proposed to be named medicinal signaling cells because that's really what they do. They signal the body to regenerate. So they're, they have this orchestrating effect. So these mesenchymal cells, when we were born, one in 10,000 cells is a mesenchymal stem cell. But when you reach your teenage years, it already has become one in 100,000. So you got tenfold decrease by the time you teenage. Uh, when you reach your 40s, it becomes one in 400,000. So that's a quarter of, of what you had when you were in a teenager. And when you reach your 80s, becomes one in two million. So you can see how it declines so drastically that you are going to begin uh, to run out of stem cells as you age, you know, further and further. And there's a reason that there's a finite lifespan, at least at this point, because we do run out of stem cells. 
besides you know the genetic changes but if this is the, the whole point of anti-aging medicine how can we slow down this process do we have to you know it's fine to become older you know i love getting older i'm getting wiser and stronger you know i'm, I'm what five months away four months away from being 50 you know I, i'm very proud it's fantastic but doesn't mean that i want to decline right so uh, do i want wrinkles if i don't have to have wrinkles why do i want it you know if i don't want uh, my organs to start to degenerate why do i want it right so i don't want to glorify the aging process I want to glorify the maturing, the the growth, the learning, the getting wiser process, but not definitely, not necessarily the declining part. So if medicine, medicine can help you to prevent the decline, then we should embrace it, right? So if we can prevent the DNA from from slowly losing the, the terminal caps, what's called telomeres, and then we can, can prevent the drastic a decline and depletion of stem cells, then we got a way to prevent the body from degenerating and you know going to its inevitable disease and demise, right? So that's not something we want. Demise, maybe we don't care, but disease, nobody wants, right? Who wants to live miserably? So that's the whole point of stem cell therapy is to not only take you away from the disease state, but preventing you from become diseased in the first place. So anyhow, so I digress. But the point is, <clears throat> when you age, the qualities of your stem cells, not just the quantities, also decline. So our stem cells are in our body because the fact that they are residing with us in our entire lifetime, that means that they are shouldering, shouldering the, the damages from the environment with us. If you're exposed to smoke, cigarette smoke, the stem cells are exposed to them. If you are exposed to radiation, they're exposed to it. You're exposed to all this, you know, you know, toxins from the environment, they're exposed to it. And that will cause decline. So slowly, they're gonna lose some potency. Um, so if you look at my lecture, you will see as we age, our stem cells, they will start to secrete less and less anti-inflammatory uh, molecules they will have less and less generations left, so less ability to do its work. They lose the potential to become more types of cells. And they also have less neuroprotective effects, right? We all want a healthy brain, but they're also less neuroprotective. Um, and, and, and also what's fascinating is that they also lose some important ability to detect cancer and kill off cancer. So these are the things we need to understand. So when you do stem cell therapy from your own body, you have to realize what you're putting back in your body it is not as ideal as something that's younger and something that's, that's more, um, that has more therapeutic potential. Um, so, so you want to look at uh, whether or not you're using your own body source or you're using um, a younger source which has more potent power. Um, so if you choose a doctor that uses a younger uh, source, which is from the birth tissue, the birth tissue are tissue from life healthy births that's otherwise gonna be thrown in the trash uh, if, if the, the parent does not donate. So if they, do they are willing to donate it, then it can be extracted and utilized for therapeutic purposes. So among all this, um, it has been found out that umbilical cord tissue cells are full of mesenchymal stem cells. So if you're getting therapy only from umbilical cord blood, guess what? You're missing a big component. And if you're getting therapy from only umbilical cord tissue, you may also miss some component. This is why I'm a believer that you need all of the components to help the body heal. So you don't rely on one cell source. There's no one single cell type that's going to be good for everything, every condition there is. So you need, what, what I always say is, um, can you make a full human being from mesenchymal stem cells? Can you make a whole human being from um, hematopoietic progenitor cells? You know, these are all important cell types, but can you create this incredible complex or an organism? No, you can't. So why am I playing God? So when I treat somebody, what, what I use is a combination of cell sources because I'm not going to play God. I'm going to put into this therapeutic, this, 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 
you know this this product or this um, you know the uh, you know whatever I'm giving to patients, I want that to include all of the intelligence that's endowed by God, you know, or the universe, whatever you want to call it. So all that intelligence into one product to give it to patients. So are the doctors doing that? So you need to ask those questions. And if you're using only amniotic fluid, guess what? There are almost no cells. Um, if you're only using amniotic membrane um, or umbilical cord tissue, um, you're missing certain components. If you're using umbilical cord blood, you're missing mesenchymal stem cells. So, so look at the sources. What are people doing? And are they able to give you the full complement of therapeutic potential? And then lastly, um, personally, I'm not a big believer in needing to grow cells to huge numbers for the cells to succeed because our human body really is the best cell incubator there is. Not some artificial machine um, with some fluid and some, some nutrition that we decide may be good for the cells. This has been decided long before uh, <laughs> we know how to make a cell medium. So when you produce cells to a vast number, unless you know exactly, exactly how to control the cells, the cells are not dividing symmetrically. They're not just one stem cells become two stem cells, two becomes four, no. Because one stem cells often divide into one daughter cell and one stem cell. And that daughter cell would div divide into two daughter cells. And then that one stem cell that was from the original stem cell may divide into one daughter cell and one stem cell. So you can see the one stem cell, you know, at four cell stage, there's only one stem cell left. Left. It, it could be three daughter cells. And the daughter cells will have all these surface receptors. They start to express who they really were. They weren't the primitive cells anymore, which rarely cause any immune reactions, immune rejections. But if you allow it to grow outside of the body, it has, it takes on the idea of its own. So inside the body, it learns to live with your body. That's the intelligence of the cells that we don't completely understand yet. But there's a difference when you grow the cells out of the body and when you grow the cells inside the body. So I talk about at, um, another, just a quick uh, video I, I interview I did with uh, Luke Story um, regarding growing cells into large numbers, why that may not be the best idea. So, so all these are questions to ask. Um, so this is a very quick overview and uh, I just hope this has been somewhat helpful and, um, and answer some questions that, that people are, you know, are, are getting a little inundated with information, but not quite sure exactly how to go about making decisions. So I hope uh, this, is, this is helping you and, um, and good luck with your health and vitality.